Hi, and we're talking about shitty games. I don't think we're so much talking <laughs> about shitty games so much as about rating systems. Yeah. Because rating systems, you know, they're really in the eyes of the beholder. Like I was saying before, you know, um, to someone, a zero score rated game could be a game that, you know, is impossible to finish because it's so buggy, or it can just be a game that, you know, you could finish that was really shitty. <laughs> like I was saying last time, right to Hell of Retribution, technically speaking, you can beat the game. There are some glitches, there are quite a few glitches actually, but you can beat it, you know, and we don't know why you want to. But, you yeah. know, a lot of people would also rate that as a 1 or a 0. But you could also argue a 1 or a 0 belongs to a game that you can't even really get past, you know, the first level of because it's so glitchy. Let's take a real- So, it depends how you, how you scale your own rating system. Let's take uh, a really good game, like Sonic 06. <laughs> Like, yes, it, it gets ripped on a lot, and a lot of it does have to do with all the bugs and how incomplete it feels, but I do feel like they're, like, that should heavily impact the rating, but if there's good aspects of it, like, let, let's say if the controls were actually really good, you know, if it had tight controls, which, yeah, no, no, it's an atrocity. Like, if it had tight controls, but lots of bugs, mention that in the review, like, hey, this game feels great, except the bugs are what ruins the experience. Yeah. Or, hell, there's some games where it's like, it's kind of weird, the whole game rating system. Um, there's this one game, really famous, uh, over the road, big wheel racing, whatever it is, known for being glitchy as hell. But so many people like that game because the way it's glitchy is fun. Yeah. It's fun in a fucked up, broken way. It's not a, it's not a great game. But you can get a lot of joy from it. And it's like, where do you put the amount of joy that game gives you on a rating scale, too? And different people do include the joy ratings, and people don't. And there's all sorts of ways to do rating systems. Some do a uh, weighted uh, rating system, where everything gets put into a different percentile it's worth. Others, it's just a, uh, eh, I'll randomly assign it a number based on how I feel at the moment. And, like, there's no conclusive way to make a rating system that works fully. Yeah, like, each one's gonna have its own flaws. I feel like a big a big one that could kind of help is for the reviewer to know who the audience is. Uh, because then in the review, they can kind of tune it towards the audience, but then I think on what... the second part, tune it towards people who are alien to it, where it's like, hey, we've never experienced this series, how is this game for newcomers as compared to veterans? You know, I, I think uh, one one important thing is for a rater to explain their rating system. Yeah, like if they say why. Because some people, you know, a five, five, uh, five out of ten game is a shit game that you should avoid like the fucking play as the Sonic 06, you know. But to other people, that's, yeah, it's an okay game. You know, yeah. I got some joy out of it. Had a few bugs, you know. Didn't have the strongest story, but you know, it worked as a hack and slash game or something like that. Yeah. But if you don't, if there's no explanation of a person's rating system, you know, you, you can only really get a feel for what that rating means by knowing other stuff that person's rated. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you had to cross-reference what they've rated, it it kind of makes it more mature. Did he have his, his reticate mm -hmm. there? No, that was his Jolteon. Ah, so you've killed it now. Yeah. So, uh, way back when, I think this was like episode because 2 SSN, or so, I, think I mentioned uh, the whole uh, evolutions with Gary here, and depending on how many times you, like, depending on, I think, three or two battles, what the results are dictates what his uh, EV evolves into. Mm -hmm. So, in the case of Jolteon, that means you haven't lost to Gary, at least in the important battles, which is the first one, uh, the optional one by Victory Road. Actually, I think it's just those two. I think those two are the ones that dictate it. If you win both, he gets Jolteon. If you lose both, he gets Vaporeon. If you win one and lose the other, he gets Flareon. It's all based on what Pikachu is strong against. With Flareon being neutral, that's like medium. In this, because Pikachu is, and Jolteon resist each other, that's considered hard. Whereas Vaporeon would be easy. Yeah. Alright, this is where we get Lapras. Yeah. Oh, even though I'm not, probably not going to use it, gotta break out the thing. 
Yeah, so, basically what I was saying is I feel that uh, there should be a bit of a cliff notes explaining how our rating system works. Or how you're going to, or how, what these numbers mean to you. And what the categories mean to you. I think we got one of our most normal names today. What was it? Kate. Wow. <laughs> That's really, really normal. We haven't had such a normal name since Monty. Not saying that our names aren't normal, but, uh... uh normal to our demographic background and culture. Yeah. Because the, the generator I'm using here spits out... A... Oh! There we go. It just spits out a name from, like, several different cultures, like... And these names might be completely normal to someone else, but... Given our backgrounds, these names are very foreign to us, I guess would be the term. I could go through a name all of them, but just for example, you got African, Bulgarian, uh, Chinese, uh, Kazakh, uh, Portuguese, Ancient Greek, Norse mythology, Was biblical. Was it Kazakh or Czech? It says Kazakh. Like Kazakhstani, probably. Oh, okay. uh, fantasy, Romanato, wrestler, transformer names. One of the ones I got one time was, uh, I think it was like Orpheus Beatstick. <laughs> Beatstick. There's a lot of really good names on it, but yeah, we could get any of those, and I made it generate one name uh, with no specified gender. It could be either or. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so. Because, like, you know, if, you, if you've never seen this, like, have you ever just seen reviews online? And you do it's anonymous reviews, and it's like, you have no idea what this person's reviewed, you don't know what their standards are, yeah. and they don't have their explanation, and it's like, well great, you're in this game 10 out of 10, I played it, it's a shit game. Yeah. Oh, you're a huge fan of this genre, or the storyline style, or the art style. Oh, well, all the points were from art style? Great. Yeah, like, you, you really gotta weight it, uh, appropriately, like, uh, if I were to take... Let, let's take Borderlands, because that's an ongoing series we have. If I rated that 10 out of the, 10 out of 10, just because of the art style, it's, well, what about the gameplay? What about the story? What about the controls? You know, I, I love Borderlands too, but it, as any game, you know, isn't perfectly, you know, tailored to us, you know? There are things that we do and don't like, you know, about it. One of the things I want Borderlands to add, which I would love, is a sort is an actual gun crafting mechanic. I mean, we got the grinder in the pre sequel, but I don't even count that because it's like, hey, get rid of some weapons or items, and pretty much play a slot mini game where you don't know what you're gonna get. That's not weapon crafting. That's turning in but, weapons to get a know, new one. I personally don't want them to add weapon crafting. Because, you know, the randomized gun thing has always been kind of their thing. And I think a grinder, but more so putting it as like a lottery power or Ganshin, whereby you, you, uh, giving up one of your guns, you get to, uh, you know, do like a random draw for a different randomized gun of the same arm or similar rank, maybe. Yeah, like it works really good, I agree with that like, too. Like tur turning your uh, old guns that you don't want into almost like gacha tickets. Potentially newer weapons. Rings. Like, yeah, like, like yeah, both maybe sides. You, maybe yeah. you if you um, get what's the highest rank of uh, rarity weapon? Uh, pearlescent. Okay, maybe if you uh, change a pearlescent uh, gun into a ticket, you know, it gets you a box where you, you're not guaranteed a pearlescent, but pearlescents and ranks of similar are a higher chance to pull from that uh, box. But maybe you take, I don't know, what's the lowest rank? Just white. Or yeah. You take a white, and hey, maybe it has, you know, a 0 0.00001 of giving you a pearlescent, but most likely will give you a white or, or similar ranking, or lower even. Yeah. You know, give you ammo maybe, because there's lower rank. Who knows, yeah. No, uh, it's uh, like I was going to rank systems, you know, they're very, very personal. And just because two people are using a 10 grade rating scale or a 5 grade, does not mean that those numbers mean anywhere near the same to No, them. definitely not. And that's where it really comes into effect, like knowing who is rating the game, knowing their demographic, knowing their gaming history, what they generally enjoy, 
and how they convey information. Like, so, for some players, graphics means absolutely nothing. You could have the worst graphics in, in existence, and if it's a strong story, good controls, all that, they'll say this is a fantastic game. Well, you know, something I like to do is looking at their reviews for a game I want. Yeah. I then look at their reviews for a game I have, or a few of those. Because if they have similar thoughts about the previous game that I did, well, it's not guaranteed, it does raise a chance that, you know, it will be a game I also like. Yeah, like, if or they... Knowing, or that their reviews would be accurate to my opinion. If someone reviewed, like, as an example, let's say someone did Final Fantasy 57. But and, they hated JRPGs. Yeah, like, they hated JRPGs. And they said, oh, Final Fantasy 57 is a fantastic game. Absolutely love it. It's the best entry in the series. If I see that, and they've hated all the others, it's like, okay, according to this guy, this is a pretty damn good game if it's in the genre that they hate. So I'll be more inclined to check it out. Or, you know, if they're hating on a Final Fantasy game, it's like, well, they hate JRPGs. Yeah, so I won't, I won't take their thing very well. It's like, okay, you just don't like JRPGs. I'll look for someone who actually... Yeah likes them, and I'll get their opinion, because yes, your opinion is valid, but I'd rather yeah, have Games have certain game genres have different tropes that people do or don't like. Yeah. Like, someone who likes JRPGs, if they enjoy Final Fantasy 57, it's like, oh, okay, so this guy who enjoys these games likes this, so clearly you know, they're doing something right with it. Oh, is it what I think it is? Yes. GS ball. JK, the GS ball is worthless. Although they made reference to it in um, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Yeah. That was actually a cool moment. At the same time, though, I was kind of hoping the GS ball would turn up in the game and it'd be something cool. We admire your courage. Uh, I love how all they do is just give you a Pokeball, really, and that's your payment. Just like, here you go, have a ball. You know what would be kind of cool? If in Sun and Moon, you found the GS ball and it contained a random shiny. Dive from the Gold and Silver game. Just a random shiny, random stats, a random guaranteed shiny that can be of any of a certain box of Pokemon. Shiny time out of time, please. Yeah, actually, speaking of that, with Pokemon Crystal on the eShop now, uh, you can officially get a legit shiny Celebi. Why? Because they, they actually have the, a GS ball event where you battle a level 30 Celebi in Ilex Forest. And he can soft reset, reset to get a shiny. And if they do the calculations the same as uh, Gen 1, like, I didn't take a look at what they did for uh, gold, silver, and crystal in the forms of uh, transferring Pokemon. But if they did the same thing for uh, Gen 1, where it was based on their experience, you could easily just soft reset until you got a shiny Celebi, and then give it the necessary experience to give it a specific uh, nature. Therefore, you're always guaranteed to have the perfect Celebi, at least for what you want. Yeah, you lost me a little bit ago, but that's because I'm not so much into these nature and all that kind of stuff. You know me, I'm not very competitive when it comes to yeah. Pokemon. Honestly, I'm, I'm probably going to grab I'll, Crystal anyways, but that, I think that'll be the, the one and only time I saw nature for nature and all that grinding. But typically, if I'm doing nature or perfect breeding sets, what am I usually doing that for? To trade to uh, one of my buddies. Yeah. Like, I'll soft reset for nature is like no problem, but I think this will be the f the one and only time I actually soft reset to get a shiny. <laughs> oh my god, are you gonna use a master ball for that one? Just so you don't have to deal with the bullshit. Of soft reset, soft reset. Finally, a shiny killed it. Yeah, it's like oh shiny. Yep, master ball done. It's like I I no no I, I'm getting you. Like I could I I think Celebi has. An ideal shiny, for what I think. They li literally took the two colors it has mm -hmm. and flipped them. That's all they did. And it works out fantastic. Like a lot of Pokemon, it doesn't work like that. Just imagine taking Pikachu, turning its body red with yellow cheeks. I don't know, that actually might work. That would look like that would be a sunburnt Pikachu. I don't know, I'd have to actually see the shades that they're going with. Uh, let's use the Pikachu on screen, like on, on the border. That would not work. No. No, that that hurts my eyes. Like, that would hurt my eyes looking at it. That hurts my mind thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, no, two gyms. 
See, well, this is the legit one. Jim says Jim, 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 Jim. But wasn't Jim the better Jim in your opinion? Because it was a cool Jim that didn't need the didn't um need to tell you his name twice. Yeah, it's like, hey, come to the gym. So we go to the gym. I love this gauntlet of trainers. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna wait for all you guys. I'm like, why the hell did I do that? Honestly, I think yeah, actually, yeah, you have to battle all of them anyways. I think there's like four or five. Yeah, four here, and then the big guy up at the top. You're trespassing in our dojo, so, but you guys are already lined up perfectly to fight me. I don't know, maybe maybe it's not so much that they're a gym as they're a dojo. The way I see it, your door was unlocked. Combining both um, Pokemon martial arts and human martial arts. Because all these guys are dressed like they're ready to do some martial arts. I mean, th they're pretty much kickboxing from a chop that's pretty badass. Yeah, that is. Hopefully Mitzi Rama can get some uh, good experience here. Because it's arm really wrestling with lacking. A... How about arm wrestling with a Geodude? Oh, see, instead of arm wrestling with a Geodude, it takes one of its heads. It slams the opponent's fist into the table. Focus energy, back in Gen 1, when it did the exact opposite of what it's supposed to do. Honestly, I'm excited for you to do gold, just something I can do whatever the hell I want. So you can be in the corner playing on Duel Links instead of me? Yeah. For that... reference, I am not playing Duel Links here. Yeah, surprisingly. We're actually, uh... Well, in fairness, most of the time I've been playing Duel Links while I've been here, I've been grinding your account. As of, uh, the current recording, at... I think it's 10 p... 8 or 10 p.m., they're starting, uh, part 2 of the Tag Duels where they unlocked Master Mode for everyone. Yeah, and particularly here, I've seen how prepared I am for that. Yeah, I'm sitting at 200 letters myself, he's sitting at, like, 800... almost at 800. <laughs> Auto Duel. I've been trying to grind the levels because I want every one of my characters to level 25 at least. I'm gonna see exactly uh, how uh, difficult Master Mode actually is because like, hard was no problem. Like, I I lost once just because Joey self destructed us. Yes, because Joey's fucking time wizard. <laughs> yeah. Joey, if you're gonna run time wizard, put a second coin flip in that deck. I have two blue eyes on the field, and we're we we're gonna win. All he has to do is attack. Okay, they have one monster, Tom, and yeah. they have like 1,000 life points. He plays his Time Wizard, does the roulette, destroys our monsters. It's like Joey. And it just... kills you because you take the damage from playing half of your attacks. Yeah, I had two blue eyes. It was insane. All he had to do was attack twice. Yeah, they had no traps. I kind of understand Time so... Wizard for the 1,000 dragon, but at the same time, just don't play it. Just don't use Time Wizard's ability unless you're fucked otherwise. It's like... Like, it's it's not the same, but it kind of is. Like, Kaiba Man's really weak. The only time I'll play it is if I absolutely have to. But otherwise, I'll be like, okay, I have it until this specific moment. Cool, I'll play it. Which sacrifices it for blue eyes. Done. Yeah. I'll probably we'll take it out. I'll do it on a fly. Speaking of which, I'm really excited about the event because I'm going to be running uh, one of my uh, blue, one of my uh, Kaiba decks for dragons. Nice. So I'm probably going to have a couple copies of uh, Blue Eyes in there. And hopefully the NPC Kaiba Sweet. on your side will have ultimate. That way. <laughs> the only downside is that they can't use your cards in hand. Yeah, but, but they can use them on field. Yeah, like I run, I have a Kidmoto Dragon, so I can auto summon one as soon as it gets destroyed. I got the Blue Dragon Summoners to get them into my hand. I got two Kaiba Mans sitting there to uh, special summon them. So, I'm pretty much prepared. I just need to hope that he has one more blue eyes. Which, guaranteed, he'll have at least one. Hey, you know how every protagonist for Yu-Gi-Oh! has their signature monster? Yeah. And Jin, Yuki, or Jedi, or whatever his name is, was he, uh, Neos. Yeah. You know, despite watching, you know, quite a bit of GX as a kid, you know what, to me in my mind, will always be a signature? Which one? Flame Wing Man. Because that's the one that won him his first duel on the show. Nice. I feel and like those probably... are the most like, iconic. Like, for Yugi, of course, it's Dark Magician. Yeah, that's his signature. You know, He's got so many, so many ones, though. Like, uh, Dark Magician Girl kind of is a signature, although that's more related to Taya now. Yeah, the, like, Exodia, uh, Gaia the Fierce Knight, Curse of Dragons, Summon Skull, Karibo. Yeah. He just, he just has so. The Magnet Warriors, like, he just has so many iconic yeah. monsters. That yes, Dark Magician is his main. It's his ace. It's his ace, but he still has so many. 
And to me, Flame Wingman is what I always think when I think of his, when I think of uh, Jane's ears. Just because, fuck, that thing wrecks. Yeah. That ability is bullshit. I run it in my Jaden deck. But I don't need anything else. I'm gonna call it here though, cause no more Yu-Gi-Oh, cause we wasted time on Yu-Gi-Oh when we were playing Pokemon. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Uh, feel free to you know like, comment, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Comment especially, cause we like those. And have a nice day. See ya.